Mountain, Island, Lightning Bolt, Spell Kiss, Switchblade, Stab Wound, Red Mage, Blue Mage. Hello, and welcome back to Red Mage, Blue Mage. I am your host, your host with the most, Wolfmir, Kenny, the Blue Mage, and my assistant, uh, my hench, my hench person. I, you got this all wrong. There's several <laughs> things wrong with this intro. One, we're back. We never went anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> to fuck you about your henchman i didn't say henchman whatever you called me i wasn't literally li- person i wasn't really listening <laughs> i was just insulted. i heard hench and i tuned out <laughs> yeah no i am just a, i am if anything you're my hench person oh okay i mean i guess that's true <laughs> i don't have a counter to that wow so get this show started, hench. We're, we're catching up on something right now. Um, time of recording, we're out of date and out of touch. When this comes out, this episode will be even more so. But that's okay. Uh, the news that we are responding to will be an ongoing thing. We are talking about universes beyond today in Magic the Gathering. How can we be beyond a universe? I, that, was a terrible, that was terrible. That was terrible. I'm whatever. Like most recordings, I'm exhausted. <laughs> universe beyond. I haven't even been in a universe <laughs> I, I knew that's what the joke was going to be. <laughs> it's a terrible joke. And it, it doesn't make any damn sense. It was the first joke you made on this podcast. I, I it's the only Return joke to I Ravnica, have. Return I've never been. <laughs> it's the only joke I have, really, so it's okay. <laughs> Well, what do you know so far about Universes Beyond? Um, nothing. Literally just the title. Literally, okay. that is all I know. Except for okay. the fact that potentially, this is just my interpretation, that they're going to start uh, incorporating things from other media, other properties, other licensing properties. Yes, that, that is the big news. So the way I thought we would approach this, because I know you haven't been following too closely, I want to read one of the announcement articles and get your feedback. The whole article? It's very short. Oh, God. Okay, Upwards fine. Upwards of 20 words. Um, I'm okay. going gonna, gonna to crack open this Coke. Well, it's already right. open. <laughs> I don't Let's have to crack anything. Action. <sighs> Not sponsored. Definitely not sponsored. We would love to. You'd be their number one sponsor. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I already, like, if you look at me on a video, any video that exists of me on the internet, there's probably right in front of me at least three empty co- cans of Coke Zero and also a half-filled can of Coke Zero and a three-quarters can full of Coke Zero and then a uh, a whole full can of Coke Zero. How many times can I say Coke Zero? Don't buy Coke Zero, unless Coke Zero pays me. Coke Zero me. is the devil. Well, I mean, unless they pay me, and then they're. Angels. I have a problem. I'm like legitimately should not be drinking five Coke Zeros a day. Fair enough. Okay. Is Coke so Zero going to be do, in this? To... No, 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 no. I'm not done with my Coke Zero. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Do you think there'll be there'll be pot- product placement? In the Magic Universe, in Magic the Gathering cards, where they show, like in Star Wars, when they had the round Cokes. I guess it's possible. Damn! I hate it! Okay, read me this article. Okay. So this is from uh, February 25th, 2021. So like I said, already we're out of touch and out of date. This is Magic's Voyages to Universes Beyond. So I'm going to read... And at any point, you indicate to me that you want to stop and talk about something. And by indicate, you mean fart loudly? Sure. Okay, that works. great. That will work. Earlier today, we revealed an exciting expansion of Magic the Gathering into Realms of Universes Beyond, a series that combines the gameplay of Magic the Gathering with worlds, characters, and stories that are cherished by millions of fans around the world. Among those worlds are the expansive universes of Warhammer 40,000, and the Lord of the Rings, with others set to join as our universes beyond expands. I, I see you shaking your head. I just keep reading. This expansion of the magic game system to other universes is exciting and new. 
and certainly raises questions for many of our longstanding fans. So today, we're going to answer many of those questions as we look toward the Universes Beyond release in 2022 and further. You better do uh, an echo on that. When you, every time you say universe universes is beyond. beyond, yeah, every beyond. time, even me right now, when I just say universe is beyond, I bet I need there to be an echo there. All right, I'll do my best. Universe is beyond. All right, let me carry on here. You ready for the next bit? Yeah. Universes beyond will act as a brand within Magic the Gathering, existing in addition to and alongside our existing line of products. Universes beyond came about thanks to a simple thought. If we can expand our story beyond the game system to things like comics, novels, and other games, then surely we can expand the game system to let players explore worlds outside of the worlds of magic. I was just thinking how uh, my intro with the Coke Zero is a very good... It's almost like I read this article before I even... It was talking about the, the Coke Zero, Coke Zero, Coke Zero. <laughs> Universe is beyond, universe is beyond, 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 beyond. beyond, beyond. beyond. We are all fans of these other universes. <clears throat> Many of us imagine what it may be like to play a game with of magic with Gandalf the Grey. <laughs> Sketched out how he might translate the One Ring to magic, or wanted to build a deck around the mighty Space Marines. In many ways, universe. This is written by somebody who's like not a fan of some no. Of these properties. In many no. ways, Universes Beyond is us living out those dreams of our own. But we also hope that Universes Beyond will bring the game we love to more people who might not have otherwise found us. We hope fans of these worlds and characters will find our game through Universes Beyond. And we hope they'll stay a while and become part of our amazing community. (sighs) We know you're curious about Universes Beyond. We can't answer everything you may be asking, but we are thrilled to set the table on a number of topics today. First... Universe is beyond. You're sh- rubbing your head right now. Yeah. First, Universe is Beyond will be branded slightly differently and will have a specific look as a result. These are still magic cards through and through, but the frame will be distinct and cards will have a holofoil stamp that denotes them as being from Universe is Beyond. It will look like this. They have like a stamp, you know, the at the bottom middle yep. of the card. Mm-hmm. They've got a little holographic stamp. Big this one is penis. like. No, it's like a little like rainbow color, and it has the Planeswalker symbol. Oh, okay, yeah. If that stamp looks familiar, it's because it already exists on Secret Lair X The Walking Dead cards, which will be grandfathered into Universes Beyond. So technically, Secret Lair is their first Universes Beyond set, which is interesting. It was coming. Yep. On that note, Universes Beyond products will generally be sold in all Magic channels, these will not be strictly secret layer products. So that's interesting because they say they won't be strictly secret layer products. So we will have secret layer products that are universal. Oh, yeah, on, sure, definitely. And things that are not secret layer. The Warhammer 40k Commander decks, for example, will be available everywhere we currently sell Commander decks, as will the Lord of the Rings product. We may occasionally do associated secret layer products released to the main release or related to the main release. Like the secret layer Godzilla lands when Aquaria came out. There will also be the occasional standalone product like The Walking Dead, but the intention is to typically make Universes Beyond as available as any other magic product. That said, Universes Beyond cards will not be standard legal. (laughs) We strive to make magic cards that are widely useful, but Universes Beyond will be above and well beyond our normal standard releases. So nothing much is changing with our normal cadence of releases for standard. This is purely a cool thing we're doing in addition to all the other cool things we're already doing. Read between all of the letters of cool and see dollar bill signs. (laughs) Yeah, cool thing. Cool things with a, a dollar sign for the S. Yeah. To that end, it's worth noting that the upcoming magic set Adventures in the Forgotten Realms is not part of Universes Beyond. For now... We're reserving the universes beyond branding for worlds outside those built by WotC. As to whether the Forgotten Realms are now canonically part of Magic's, Magic's multiverse for now, the answer is no. But we may change our minds in the future if it makes sense and is a fun net positive for Magic and R&D. Like, it just... To, to interject a thought here before we get to the end of this little article, 
There's so much in here about we don't know. We're literally making this up as we go, and we're going to see what people think about it. I mean, I think that's fine. I think that's fair. Yeah. Finally, fans who have seen us try out a variety of treatments for cards featuring characters from other universes might wonder if we're utilizing the treatment from the Ikoria Godzilla cards, existing magic cards skinned with the alternate universe, or the treatment used for The Walking Dead, alternate universe cards that stand on their own. The answer is, quote-unquote, both. But often we'll default to letting those cards stand on their own. We may find charming opportunities to do the reskin versions of existing cards, and we'll continue to balance between the two as we move forward. Universes Beyond Beyond represents an exciting, new, and yes, different take on magic. We're ecstatic to geek out over some of our favorite (laughs) stories, characters, and fandoms alongside all of you. And we look forward to sharing more on Universes Universes Beyond Beyond as we get closer. Fiend. Wow, this is funny. <laughs> On cool. so many levels. What stands one, out to you? One is the repeated use of Universes Beyond, which cracks me up. It Two. is funny. This is not a long article. I just did a control F. They say Universes Beyond 21 times in this article. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, <laughs> also, the thing that cracks me up is it does feel very much like a Steve Buscemi undercover. How do you do fellow kids? Uh, do you enjoy the ring from Lord of the Rings? Do you like a Gandalf? Well, guess what? I too like a star <laughs> Um, So the article just cracks me up. Yeah. It honestly, you know, we've talked about many times on this podcast where was of course is a company first and foremost like yep. w- whatever happened at the inception where it was just a cool bunch of like two people or three people making a car game together or whatever has blossomed into this giant you know thing that's been bought by Hasbro um owned by Wizards of the Coast um it's it's just it's just a company and they're going to always want to be making money and i think this is actually interesting because if i was in the same position as you know magic the gathering and you're wanting to expand and you're wanting to get new players in and you're trying to get more people in and they did really well with the walking dead set you know maybe they did that as a like we'll see how this goes we'll see if people are actually interested in it and we've talked about it before on online people are not the majority of the consumer base. People who are vocal online and vocal online in these communities are not people who, there's more people offline buying stuff. You know what I mean? So for every, for every one person on Twitter, uh, tagging wizards of the coast there's 10, 10 or 20, 20 or however many who are just like i like magic the gathering and i go them i used to go to my local game shop and buy stuff and hang out with my friends you know which is something that i used to do before being online before i was ever on twitter um i would just go to the local game shop and go play friday night magic and i would buy packs of stuff and if i back then saw a lord of the rings stuff i would b- have bought it because it's fun Indeed, before Twitter even existed. Yes, exactly. Um, and so I get it. I and guess from a business point of view, it's pretty freaking smart. Yeah, definitely. I was going to, uh, one of my initial questions to talk about in relation to this news, I think being on online, being on Twitter, being one of the people who plays Magic and is like part of the community and joins in on it, I think the reception has been mixed. Um, But I wanted to start with the positives. Like, what are the positives of this product line? And it's something that Wizards mentioned and that you mentioned as well. This very well could bring more people into Magic. Yeah. Which can only be good. Yeah. If you're a Magic player, more people liking and playing and buying Magic is good for you as a Magic player. Yep. Yep. Totally. Um... Uh, needs more resources for them to develop new products and develop new things for you to enjoy. Maybe hire more R and D people. Totally. Maybe yeah. Slow down. Da- maybe potentially even slow down so they can better do it. Although I very much doubt that. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, this will be something we get into in future episodes, I'm sure. But I am very optimistic that we are on a an upturn of quality of new products. I hope um, so, because my my thing is like I really like 
they're smart in keeping it like branched away from like tournament stuff and like other formats that are going on right Mm -hmm. um like standard and stuff so it's very smart of them to say no these cards aren't for standard this isn't for really competitive magic right um this i mean not saying you can't be competitive you know you want you know what i mean yes um there's a difference between like playing against an opponent and playing in a tournament to try to win money or being a professional player or whatever correct so they're smart to do this i mean we already have seen it with like the you know silver bordered uh my little pony stuff god like i mean it's 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 exciting to me because it's like i mean i'm not i'm not like a big lord of the rings person or warhammer person but it would be interesting to see them branch out into like god it would be right now my new obsession is marvel cinematic universe (laughs) right and so it's like oh my gosh if they go and do like you know could get the licensing for marvel which would be pretty freaking amazing i would i would be all about a wanda vision you know commander deck or something you know it's just like a fun idea if you could have uh uh, Wanda and the Vision both have partners yeah. as legendary creatures that you could have a, a a two commander deck. Yes, I would I would I would love something like that. That's that's fun. And there's other properties too. Like um, uh, <laughs> this will never happen, but a Harvest Moon. But you know what I mean? Like stuff that that's like sure. people really love and are excited about that exists. Oh my god, a Star Wars one. Well, Hasbro already has all kinds of ties to. Yeah, exactly. So I, I feel like that's just an inevitability. Yeah, that exactly. Will happen. Star Wars. I don't know. It's exciting. I think it is fun. I think it's fun, and I don't care about the cash grab. Fuck it. Like their business. Of course, they're gonna want to make money. The end. I don't mind. I I okay. Yeah, we have talked about this before. I don't mind them wanting to make money. Like they're a company. That's what companies do. That is not to say that every way of getting money is equal. Sure. Right? Uh, like well, they could yeah. be they could be holding people up and like robbing banks and I would be less cool with that. Well what is this argument? Okay, where's this going? I, I, I'm just saying the the point I want to make with that uh, bad analogy is that not every cash grab is created equal. There are some cash grabs that I think are fine, and there are some that I think are, in the long term, harmful to the game. And to me, that's the dividing line. Like, when I think about things like, they refuse to print, reprint Fetchlands, as an example. I think that's long term harmful for the game. Sure, they're holding that in reserve. We we know players want the Fetchlands, and we can just print them at some point and ensure that we will sell a product like a secret layer they did in the past year where they sold one copy of half the fetch lands in a secret layer. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that did very well for them, but is it good long-term for the game, the health of the game that players can't get access to the essential game pieces? I think no. Like I think legacy and vintage and these old formats are going to die and modern too. They're going to die if you don't give these reprints. And that's not good for players, and it's not good for the company. So I think that there are some ways that they can go about doing a cash grab that are harmful, not just to us as players, but them as a company. And that's the worst version. It's it's the short-term benefit versus the long-term benefit and health of the game. <laughs> yes? Nothing. Nothing. Are you just chuckling because I know I'm people, aware of people this. can't balance those things? Companies. Yeah, yeah. I've had firsthand experience with frustration seeing it uh, firsthand. So yeah. it's it yep. is it is because it's one of those things. See, the problem that I have with it though is like wizards, they're they're not the product they end up putting out is a piece of paper that's printed on, right? And I'm not trying to diminish it. I'm just saying from a perspective of when you are making like a toaster oven, it's different. 
And what they end up doing, they don't have a lot of overhead is what I'm getting at. So when you think about like supply chain and that kind of stuff, they have truly like maybe two or three, the, 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 the whoever's printing it and then whoever's making like their packaging, right? And so I think about it where I've worked in consumer goods, where you're making, uh, you're doing plastic and molding and all this other stuff. And you're making these products that that, that cost is, is there. And on top of that, you're also paying for um, people to come up with a product. So like R and D. So basically when I look at wizards and they have a, they shouldn't be having to make it, cash grab like like sh looking at short-term payoffs if they do it i th like i think about the secret layer for um the walking dead to me now with this information i feel like they were doing that to see how it would be received what would it do numbers wise they're, that kind of they stuff were the they were testing the waters for something larger which is that they're now proposing out so that to me didn't seem like a cash grab now that seemed like they were taking a business risk to test something in a market to see what it would the returns would be and it paid off really well and so now they're going to do something so you know earlier on we're like people were complaining about oh they're just trying to make money a secret layer this walking the dead this seems like really shitty because of blah 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 we were we did not have the foresight that they obviously were do, having longer term mm -hmm. um and so I'm kind of like, I look back, I'm like, did I say something shitty about the, that in the thing? Now I'm like, well, damn, you guys are actually trying to do it in a way that makes sense to build up to something. Um, and that's really good. That's kind of, That to me is more encouraging now than what I thought it was with the secret layer. Oh, this is just a cash grab. They're just trying to do something. They're trying... So you, you see it as they're, they're trying to build more to the future yes. rather than let's just try to get the money now and who cares what happens after. Yes. Um, and because I, and the reason why I brought up the consumer goods is because they can take that risk, you know what I mean? Without the worry of sinking, you know, $20 million into tooling cost and plastics and like, and all for the like, worry of releasing something out into because it's like god consumer good stuff versus like story plus art plus like a piece of paper that ends up being printed on is a completely is a completely different game and i think they have more more room to play more room to experiment more room to make risks um and i think that's all fine and well because if i was running a company this is this is super smart. It's like, what's cool? What do people, like? what are the, what do the kids like? What they do like, the kids like these days? They like that force. They like that baby Yoda. They, oh my God. Like, baby they Yoda. Like that Warhammers. Warhammers are big right now. I mean, God, if they really wanted to like, oh yeah, they have a lot. Like, oh my God, an, a truly legit Animal Crossing match of the gathering set would be something I would buy in a heartbeat. Like, without a doubt. Like, what if it's the fruit trees are your mana? You know what I mean? Like, come on. Right. Yeah, I mean, they can definitely get every land type very easily. Dan yes, Just exactly. with the different fruit trees. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, yeah, it's exciting. I mean, like, I, I like the title Universes Beyond. I mean, it captures what they're going for. But I just imagine for... For the people at Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, it's like, imagine the universes of revenue beyond. <laughs> imagine what we could do. Well, it's just, but I mean, honestly, it's also just fun. You know, like, what what nerd or geek or whatever you want to call that likes this type of media doesn't want to, like, play games with an anime that they really enjoy? You know what I mean? Like it's it's fun like you want that um and you can't sell it because you don't have the licensing fee so then you have a company who has the money and the revenue and the capital to to pay for the licensing for these things so you can have cards and it's fun i mean we already do it we already make we already project other 
licensing onto Magic the Gathering cards. Like, even if it's just jokes when things come into play, you know what I mean? Like, just make sure. up stuff. You try to make a Animal Crossing deck. You try to already make a... Um, a Thanos deck. Yes. Like a long time ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Um, and I think, too, like, along the same lines, people have brought up the idea of altars, you know? Uh, commissioning somebody to do an altar of a card you really like like your commander to make you know i don't know your memnarch look like optimus prime or whatever it is you know a fire and... truck no um my my point is um as you as just to reaffirm what you're saying magic players want to or are interested in bringing in their other fandoms into magic and incorporating it in there and i think this is just wizards being like hey people like this and want to do this anyway why not bring it in in an official capacity <laughs> i'm sorry i'm laughing because I, your head always turns away from your mic so i'm thinking i'm looking <laughs> you think it i'm looking to a universe beyond <laughs> no stay here we're talking here yeah i am um, wizards you can have my money i don't care <laughs> yeah, if they if they introduce a Modica set, a card Magic capture Girls, Sakura set would be amazing. Right. If they introduce an artifact set that has Evangelion in it, if they introduce, you know, whatever. Here's okay. So this is a good segue because I was thinking about this in relation to universes beyond. Two related things. Okay, number one. I've heard people make analogies to, and I myself have made analogies to, universes beyond kind of being like Smash Brothers. Okay. Sure. In terms oh, of yeah. like, you've got you've got all these characters from different universes all joining together and fighting each other, and no one plays Smash Brothers and is like, what's Sonic the Hedgehog doing fighting yeah. Samus? Yeah, exactly. You know, they that that's it's a just really fun. Good, that's a really good analogy or another good like like example of 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 a crossover game yes but the question i have is i mean obviously that's not always going to be the case if i sat down if if bloodborne 2 came out which i don't even want bloodborne 2 but let's say bloodborne 2 came out bloodborne's my like my favorite single player video game of all time let's say bloodborne 2 came out and in it you had sonic the hedgehog look i like sonic the hedgehog but he shouldn't be in Bloodborne. He should too. not be in Bloodborne, but he could be in the uh, you know another game with Bloodborne characters. You just have to take him out of the setting, right? Like, what if they added somehow? I mean, this isn't going to happen, but if they added to Smash Brothers, the new champion they add in is Lady Maria or Eileen the Crow. Would I be ex- like next time I? Yeah, I guess so. You would be <laughs> if I jumped. If I went to a friend's house and they had Smash Brothers, and I I could play as Eileen, I'd I'd probably play as Eileen. Exactly, Aileen. you would want yeah. to. I was excited okay. to be Isabel and Mario Kart. Like, are you yeah. kidding me? Like, when you love a character and you love something and it resonates with you, and you love another thing and you get to like be that character or interact with that, you want that. It's fun. I think the key is as far as like, because I would, like I said, if I were playing Bloodborne, I don't want Sonic to be there. But if I'm playing Smash Brothers, I don't mind Sonic being in the same game as Eileen or Zelda or whoever. And I think it's what is the nature of the game that the crossover is happening in. Right. And Magic the Gathering is already a crossover game, like by default, because it's about different universes crossing over with each other anyway. Mm -hmm. Like you can play traditional like classic original Mirrodin where there are just literally robots they just look like full-on technological robots and they can be fighting classic wizards and goblins right. from Lorwyn and nobody bats an eye when that happens there was a really funny um uh somebody sent me a tweet where it was uh I'm, pr- I'm bringing it up so I can actually say it it's uh it's <laughs> it's a batter skull and the headless horseman and then somebody drew this picture i'll send it to you i'll send okay. it to you via tweet we're talking about talking about like funny things and magic that already exist 
<laughs> it's like you have these things interacting with each other on a playing field already. So you have Batter Skull being equipped to the Headless Horseman, and then somebody drew this really funny drawing of a horse with a Headless Horseman with the bell <laughs> Batter Skull is on top of its head. It's a giant head. grinning mouth with a spinal column. Yeah. Hanging off his head. Yes. Where his head should be. Yes, so I'm just saying we already yeah. do, we already have this, and also what you have to remember about Smash Brothers. If you go back to '64, it was mm -hmm. like there were animated toys in a room. Ma Master Hand picked up the toys from the toy box, and there right. were all the characters, and they come to life. Well, I think about it like that. If you want a different uh, analogy, just imagine a uh, 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 alien versus no Predator Four. Is that the one with uh uh? uh Fuck. Where everybody You're speaking gets... out of my death now. Oh, gosh. Let me look it up because I want to oh, make boy. sure I'm right. This is the most research you've ever done for Unmage Fuck Mage. off. It is not. <laughs> uh, is there a Predator 5? That's not the answer this, I'm looking for. Is this the Ron Perlman one? It's. I want to... It's the one where people get sucked together into no together that's the wrong word <laughs> <laughs> that's a oh, i'm watching it. amber what predator that's, movie are you watching that's a different one what the predator movie with what's this guy who was the rat man <laughs> the, the guy who wilbur uh, uh you're thinking of a different movie predator uh who is the actor i'm thinking of let me look up Wilbur. <laughs> Let me look up Wilbur. Rat man. <laughs> Willard. Willard. Oh, is this, what's his name? Chris something? Act starring. Christopher. No, not Crispin Glover. Damn it. Wrong That's person. The one. It's not the right person. Who looks that like. That was Chris... the right person I was thinking of, Who right? Who looks like. Who looks like a rat? Like <laughs> <laughs> Crispin Glover. God. I gotta get this. Uh, nope. It's uh, Andrew Adrian Brody. And the only reason why I remembered Adrian Brody is because <laughs> there was a Neil Cecilia oh song that's like Adrian Brody, Adrian Brody, Adrian Brody, Predator. Predators yes. 2010. Predators. So in this movie, people get <laughs> sucked out of time and thrown onto a planet, and they're all varying like mercenaries and badasses, and they end up having to fight each other. Well, actually, the Predators are trying to hunt them down. We got Oops. there. We got there, everybody. <laughs> okay, now can you remember what the point of bringing that yes, up was? Yes, is because if you want to make a lot of different properties coming together to make sense in one area, you have to take them out of a setting that they're in and put them into a neutral setting, a neutral setting. That's why it works for Super Smash Bros. Why nobody will blink an eye about Super Smash Brothers because it is a neutral setting where the premise is everybody's just fighting each other. And the stages all look, are like, like look play sets. They look like, you know, dollhouses essentially, like just a cap, like that's this, this little piece. It's a back. In the same way, you might have a book shelf in your house where you have figures from different universes. Next sure. To each other. Like I literally have an alien next to Meowth. <laughs> and I will take a picture of this and show it to you so you understand. And maybe I'll put it on the internet as well on Red Mage, Blue Mage. So when this episode comes out, it makes sense. And it's 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 the alien doing a yoga pose. He's sitting cross crisscross applesauce. And there's also Pokemon up here too. Alright, there you go. Thank you. Like how much bigger Meowth is than the Xenomorph. It also speaks in Japanese. Wow. The map the, the Meowth. The meowth. <laughs> <laughs> it has a horrible voice. Here, I'll do it for the podcast. All right. One second, podcast. All right. Okay, I got to shut you off, Meowth. Um, That's right. This was back when uh, uh, Pokemon was blowing up, and we lived right across the street from a Toys R Us when I was like 
1996, 1998. And uh, they were just trying to get toys on the shelf and they didn't ever get this, um, the localized voice box. They just literally like repackaged a Japanese toy into uh, English box and I have it still. Wow. So there you go. To this day. Yeah, he's missing his tail. Unfortunately. Okay, that happens. Unfortunately. But I love this Meowth. It's ridiculous. And I've had him. God, this Meowth is so old. This Meowth is like 20 some years old. Jesus. Older than my students, for God's sakes. You're an old man. Yep. You're an old woman. Whatever. <laughs> but your point is, overall, that we are used to seeing different franchises overlap so long as they're in a context where it makes sense for them to overlap yeah like you said why would sonic the hedgehog be in a cage where those dogs are in bloodborne i will say i my initial gut reaction is to have very surprisingly to be an old man about it and be like get your war hammer out of my magic the gathering i don't want to play lord of the rings and magic Guess what? Life's too short to give a shit. Enjoy everything. Well, hear me out. Hear me out. Because I, I wanted to say that's where my gut reaction is. Yep. Like, that's my initial impression. And I think about things like, I like all these, like, I like a lot of different properties. And I like a lot of different franchises. I like a lot of different fictional universes. I don't personally feel the need to get them all crossed over. Like, sure, I love Bloodborne. And I love Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't need to see them interact with each other. But and I can it be cool. I feel like, again, gut reaction, it, it might cheapen it slightly. But when it comes to magic specifically, am I really worried about the very proud and noble Magic the Gathering storyline being corrupted by bringing in Space Marines? No. We, we clown on magic stories so much anyway Indeed. that there's what are what am I what am I defending you know what I mean yeah and also guess what you don't have to buy the cards yeah I mean that's the ultimate right yeah they're Is not that, for you uh, yes I mean on the on the flip side again going back to gut reaction territory I get the idea of like I don't love the idea of i'm sitting down to play magic and a lot of what i love about magic is the flavor and i have to fight against megatron but on the flip side if somebody came to the table with a silver bordered commander that's fine by me like i don't care if you bring alexander clamilton and sit down with me at the table and and play some magic so why should i be mad if you sit down with you know Saruman. Yeah, I don't care. I literally, like, there are so other multitudes of things to be upset about. This is yeah, so exactly. far down. It's not even registering, honestly. The more I think about it, the less I care. <laughs> think less. <laughs> Smile more. Yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I, I mean, I just, I again... I feel like, I don't want to be too real here, but there are so many other sad, horrible sure. things going on in the world to even like this to even register as whatever. I'm like, I don't care. Have fun. I get it. I understand. It's a fun time. We're going to have a fun time with it. Uh, yes. And I get where you're coming from. I would say it's okay to get passionate about magic stuff. Like, imagine, God forbid, imagine Wizards actually did something. I mean, people have been saying it for years and years now. Imagine they actually did something that killed the game. You know, they they did some wild thing that actually killed the game. They can't print anymore. They go bankrupt. No more magic cards. Your, your response of there are bigger things to worry about is still true. But I think you should, you could still be upset reasonably and like irritated. I know that's not what you're saying. You're, you're not saying conf you're, fuck you're magic. You're completely who cares. conflating the statement I just made, where it's like, is that the right word? I don't know. Yeah, that's right. The word. Basically, I'm not. This to me, what they're doing is so unobtrusive in my from my perspective like it's not going to like they said it's not gonna be legal and standard or whatever the other one was 
why it's okay i'm like and most of the games i'm doing right now are casual i think it would only hurt the competitive landscape um from a tournament and like people who are trying to play it professionally are in the in the competitive mindset and they've already safeguarded that so like <laughs> all right i'm all for trying new things out and yeah. being weird and i like weird cards and i just think it'd be really fun to see a goblin set that um is all uh dressed up like a marvel characters so you know or if you had like a dark crystal set or something. Ooh, baby, baby, it's a wild world. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Speaking of crossovers, yeah, yeah, I, I know, I know what you're saying. From your perspective, this is just like chocolate and peanut butter, just two great flavors coming together. And you know what? If you don't like it, you don't have to buy it, and that's fine. Yeah, I don't like Reese's peanut butter cups. It's all right. I'll I'll eat something else. Yeah. If you don't like if you don't like Lord of the Rings, you don't like Warhammer, you don't have to buy these sets, you don't have to play these formats. It's fine. And on that note, I'm done talking about it. Okay. Well, <laughs> I have no more analogies to make. I have no more uh, uh, thoughts. Head empty. Except I want to listen to that. Po I just want to listen to that meowth again. All right. Take us out, meowth. <laughs> We'll see you next time, everybody.